All right, welcome. This is day two of translations. Um, so, students in my class have had a couple minutes to start working on this. Um, so we're gonna check in. So here, our vertex is what? What was our vertex? Zero, negative two. I agree, Nick, very good. So zero, negative two. Really, there was no right or left shift. So we're starting at zero, negative two. And I like to put that in the middle. Because that helps me know my vertex is either going to be the very the lowest point or the highest point. So my vertex is 0, negative 2. Then I want to choose a couple points to the right and left. So like negative 1, negative 2, and 1, 2. How do I get those values? How am I going to figure out my y? Plug them in. Yeah. So I take a 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 2. Plug it in. 2 squared, 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. All right, these same values will be here. So if I take a negative 1 and square it, and then subtract 2, I still get 1 minus 2. So somebody on my earlier in my other class asked me, they said, I put this in my calculator, and it told me I got negative 1. And if you try that, it'll tell you negative 1. Because really, we're squaring the whole thing, the negative as well. This says the opposite of 1 squared. So this will give you a negative answer. That's not what we're asking. We're saying take negative 1, square the whole thing, and subtract 2. We get negative 1 and 2. So we see the symmetry. We want to graph those points. So 0, negative 2, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 2, 2, and negative 2, 2. And then we want to connect our dots. A smooth curve. I saw lots of smooth curves. I didn't see any V's last night on your homework, so good job. That's it. That's our parabola. Oops, didn't finish that. What is our axis or line of symmetry? What is that? X equals what? X equals zero. It tells me right there. X equals zero. Once I find my vertex, I know my, uh, my line of symmetry goes right through the center of my vertex. Okay, so I'm going to go through each of these little things and talk to you about what they are. Uh, some of them you don't really need any explanation. Is that is that a max or a min? That's a minimum. Basically, is it the highest or lowest point? It's the lowest point, so we're just going to circle minimum. All right, then we have domain and range, increasing, decreasing interval. Let's see if I can move this up a little bit. Okay. Increasing interval. So we always want to read left to right. So here we're going down till we get to the bottom. Then we stop. Then we're going up. Okay, so which x values are we decreasing on? We're decreasing from all the way over here until we get to what number? Zero. Zero, and then we stop. So this number right here, the axis of symmetry, the vertex, we are decreasing from a negative infinity until we get to zero. Now we can't ever get to negative infinity, so we put a bracket, a, a parenthesis, not a bracket. Okay, Nick? So we're taking this, leaving it open, because we can't really get to negative infinity. We also are not going to include zero. Because at zero, some, some teachers want to argue that it is increasing or decreasing, but I say it stopped. Because before you, if you're decreasing, you have to stop before you increase. There has to be a change point. Yeah. Yes, you could also say when x is less than 0. So x is less than 0. Good, that's another way of saying it. Um, this is what we, we use interval notation in Algebra 2 and pre-calc, but either, either way is good. Increasing interval. We increase on x is greater than 0, or from 0 to positive infinity, not including either. Okay? And domain. Which x values are we using? Domain is saying x values. Range is y. So which x's are we using? This says it keeps going. Somebody said from negative 2 to 2. Those are the x's we use. And I get that. I get why they said that. Because that's all we show in our table. But are those the only x's we're using? No. We have arrows and it keeps going forever and ever and ever. So we're going to say all real numbers. That double, double backed R says all real numbers, all values of X. All right, and then the range is what values of Y. 
So we're not using all of our y's because there's empty dead space down here with no graph on it. So I go from the bottom to the top and I say, where do I start? No, 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 yes. Where do I start saying yes? At negative 2, because yes, there's a function there. So from negative 2 until forever, we are, we have y value, we have our function. But are we equal at negative 2? Yeah. yeah. So we're going to put a bracket like that. Now, um, what Ashley Kate was saying is that our y's, we could also state y is greater than or equal to negative 2. And these two things say the same thing. Okay? So now that we've done that one together, I feel like you're better equipped to try this one right here. So try the other one. Be careful about starting with your vertex. Opposite, same. Start with your vertex in the middle, graph it, fill in that information. Okay? So try it, and then we'll jump in and write some quick notes. Here we go. So, who can tell me the vertex? Kevin, you have your vertex? Very good. Negative 2. Oh, if I write in white, you won't be able to see what we're saying. Negative 2, 1 is a great place to have our vertex, the opposite of the x, and 1 for the y. Very good. We want to use numbers to the left and right of that. So, negative 3, negative 4, negative 1, and 0, right? Then we need to plug some values in. What did you get when we typed in negative 1? Who's got an answer? Negative 1, what happened? Negative 1 plus 2, 1. 1 squared, 1 plus 1 is 2. Good. And you know what? They both get that answer. Because negative 3 plus 2 would be negative 1, and negative 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. All right, 0. 0 plus 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. Same answer. All right, let's go ahead and graph it. Negative 2, 1. Negative 3, 2. Negative 1, 2. Negative 4, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 0, 5. Alright, so you guys had already done this. That's what our graph would look like. So this told me a road map. It said go up 1 and go left 2. So it's opposite of what it looks like. Right? Alright, line of symmetry. Ah. Uh, what do you think? Test, what'd you get? Negative two. Very good. Vertex. I think we kind of already did that one. Negative two, one. All right. Is it some max or a min? What do you think, Rachel? Is our vertex a max or a min? Definitely a minimum. All right. Increasing interval. When are we going up? Yeah, Tiva? I agree with infinity, but on this one, she said from zero to infinity at first, but now she's correcting herself and saying from negative two to infinity. Definitely, we're increasing from negative two to infinity, and we're going to put just open brackets. All right, how about decreasing? Who's got decreasing? When are we going down? Andrew, you got this? Very good. From negative infinity to negative 2. Again, not equaling. Uh, you could also say x is less than negative 2 and x is greater than negative 2, if that's easier for you. How about domain and range? What is our domain? Ryan, what do you think? Uh, all also, all real numbers. Very good. And our range, who else haven't I talked to? How about Valeria? What do you think for our range? What y values are we using? When do we start using our y values? At one. At one, exactly. So one to infinity. And we're including one, but not infinity. Okay? So if we look at this for just kind of a general function, so let's write in some letters. y equals x minus h squared plus k. Can you guys write that? above all of these notes at the bottom of your first page? What would our vertex be? Yeah, what would you get, Tiva? So, if this says negative 2, would your vertex be negative 2? Uh, no. 
is the opposite, so it would be actually positive h, positive k. Right? So if that says negative, it's positive. If that says positive, that would be negative. So it's really the opposite. Okay? Line of symmetry would be x equals whatever that says. So x equals h. Minimum, maximum. Huh. I don't know what to write there. <laughs> uh, how do you explain that? You can't... Right, we can't really tell unless we see the graph. And we're actually going to explore more today and tell when is it going to be positive or negative. When is it going to be opening down and when is it going to be opening up? So we're going to look at that. But really you just want to figure out, is it the highest point or is it the lowest point? Right? Um, increasing and decreasing intervals. Uh, we are always looking at x values. Right? So when we said intervals that are increasing or decreasing, we're talking about the x's. Uh, domain. How did our domain change? It was x values and they were related to the h or the k. Oh, wait. They weren't related to anything, really. No matter where we shift, what is our domain? It's always all real numbers. Okay. Always all real numbers. And that's how we, we do this symbol right here with a double spined R, and that means all real numbers. Okay, and then the range, hmm, the range changed. What helped me change my range? Negative 2 and 1. Where do we see negative 2 and 1? Do you see which letter affected? Negative 2, negative 2, 1, 1. It looks like our k value is changing our range. Now, I don't want to say too much about that because you're going to, again, explore. If you have a, f a parabola like that, it's going to be values greater than that number. But if you flip it like that, if you reflect your parabola, then it might be values less than that number. So I don't want to put anything more specific than that on your notes. Okay? So you guys are going to do a little exploration. Oh, but we have to check homework first. So let's see. Um, we're going to go over homework one. You guys are going to explore in your calculators and kind of see what's happening. So hopefully we all have calculators. I have a couple you can borrow. Homework two is the worksheet for tonight. Let's peek at homework. I saw a lot of good answers. You want to peek at that, see if you have any questions. So check and see that we got the same answers. All right, so the next activity, you guys are going to work in groups, and you are going to explore A. So let's read the directions. It says, where does, what does A do? Below you are given the graph of the parent function, y equals x squared. Here's y equals x squared. I would like you also to graph it on your calculator. I have this really fancy graph. Maybe some of you have it too. Where my, my parent function... Is it that homework? No. This is classwork. Sorry, someone asked if this was homework. All right, um, so my parent function is going to be graphed in blue, and then I can change the color of my other function. So this guy is not the parent function. It's been changed, right? So we are trying to figure out what does A do. We're going to explore. What if A is 2? What if A is 3? What if A is a half? What if A is negative 3? What happens to, to my graph? So here it says graph each of the following. Take note of what A does in the formula g of x equals ax squared. So if your, let's see what 2 does. So you're going to graph in your calculator. Everybody grab your calculator. Go ahead and type in your y equals screen. Type in x squared so you can see the parent function. And then second, go ahead and type in 2x squared. Does everybody know how to do that? You, c you can use your x is right here. And then the square button is right here. Did you find them, Alex? Yes, no? Success? Alex? Oh, man. Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa. All right. So we've got y equals x squared and 2x squared. So 
we need to fill in the table. So I'm going to look at second table. Now my table shows me in color. Yours might not be in color. But my first one is negative, I'm sorry, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. From negative 2 to 2, I have 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. Okay, but then for my 2x squared, I'm going to fill in my table. When x is negative 2, my, my y now is 8. Does everybody see what happened? At negative 1, it's 2. At 0, it's 0. At 1, it's 2. At 2, it's 8. So I want to know what is the value of a. Here's this formula. Where is a? What is my a? It's 2. Do you guys see that? Here, g of x equals ax squared. What's my a that I have right there? A 2. Do you see the 2? 2 out in front. Okay, so my a is 2. What values did a change? My table stayed almost identical except for what? What changed? The x or the y? The y values changed. How much did they change? What did they do? Doubled. They doubled. They went times 2. All of my 4 times 2, 1 times 2, 0 times 2 times 2. Everything doubled. So what values did A change? The y values. And it made them double. Okay. How did A affect the shape of the graph? So now we can look at the graph. Oops. So we're going to hit graph and look at the difference between the two graphs. So that was my first parent function, and that's my new function, 2x squared. So what happened to the graph? Can you describe it? It made it a little smaller, maybe? What's another word for when it goes in like that? Thinner? Okay, that's a good word. Thinner? Some people have said narrower. Or taller. Those are all good words to describe what happened. So I want you to go ahead and graph these new table. This new table. 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 8. I think that's 8. And then graph that. Okay? Do you guys see what you're doing? You're going to flip to the next side and try that on your own. You're going to work in groups. Ready, go, and then we'll check in. Here we go. So, when you have a 3 in front, that 3 is your A, what, what values did it change? Again, it changed the Y values. It affected the shape by making it even narrower than it was before. And I don't really have time to graph this incredibly accurately, but it, it got even narrower. Sorry, that's a sloppy graph. All right. What about 1 half? What happened with 1 half? Our table looked like this. All the y values were half of what they were before. So my a value is a half. How did the table change affected the y values? And what happened to the graph? 0, a half, 2, a half, 2. How would you describe this graph compared to the original graph? Now my pen doesn't want to write. Whew, there we go. How is that compared? What happened? It's wider. Yeah. All right. And the other thing you needed to explore and figure out is what happens when it's a negative 3. You get 0, negative 3, negative 12, negative 3, negative 12. So now it's upside down, right? And 12 and 12. Oops, 12. All right, so what happened when there was a negative in front? We call that a reflection. It reflected. The other thing we need to know is it's called a dilation. The narrower and wider is called a dilation. Like when you go to the eye doctor and they dilate your eyes to get really big, that's kind of like that. All right, so value of A was a negative 3. Uh, the Y values. And it affected it by getting, by reflecting and narrowing. 
So, the way we're going to talk about this, on the very end there's this quick summarizer. Maybe Miss Griffiths can pass out homework, but that doesn't mean I need you packing up. Quan, this is the most important part. Whoa! Okay, I can keep you after class if you're not going to pay attention. I need your stuff still out, and we're filling in notes. Okay. Okay. Here we go. This is important. So, it says, when A is negative, the graph will be reflected over the x-axis. Please write this down. When the absolute value of A, when A is greater than 1, the graph will have a dilation that, nar that narrows the graph of the normal, the parent function. Thank you all for filling this in. And when A is less than 1, but this is not completely correct. When A is between 0 and 1, so when A is a fraction between 0 and 1, the graph will have also, we're going to call it a dilation. It might also be considered a contraction, but it's a dilation by a factor of a half. So that actually widens the graph, right? So it's wider like that. All right, I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. If you borrowed a calculator, I need them back.